robots serving him. He gave us free will, a chance to make a decision on whether we wanted to follow him or not. And the way I use it is, is you, you, your, your spouse or a loved one, you would rather them choose to be with you rather than be with you just because you said you're to be with me, right? Means more. Again, creation. And then, then when the fall of man took place, you know, the, the, the love of God and what it took because uh, had it been me, had I been God, which is a good thing I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm nowhere near God, but, uh, you know, I probably would have just wiped them from, you know, wiped Adam and Eve from the face of the earth. <coughs> well, I'll just make two more that maybe will do what I say next time, right? Uh, you know, uh, and then you, you see we, we go even further uh, and, and closer into history. You look at uh, whenever the uh, Israel children were in bondage in Egypt and uh, the plagues that were sent and, uh, uh, you know, then the parting of the Red Sea. You know, Moses, uh, he did indeed bring that staff and put it down. But guess what? God split the Red Sea. You know, mm -hmm. if, without God, Moses is just a fellow that took a, a staff and did that in front of the, of the Red Sea. But with God, it split. It said they walked across on dry ground. That's incredible. But just things that God has done. We can keep going about things that God has done and who God is. He's all powerful, right? All knowing. He knows you. It's incredible. But today we're going to be looking at three things that God is that First John tells us. Three things that God is. The title of our sermon is, is simply this: God is. With, with three dots, you know, like to be continued or to be determined. God is. But let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer before we begin, and then we will get started at looking at three things that God is. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. We just thank you so much for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you so much for this day that we have to be in God's house, to be here and to study a portion of your word, Lord. And I just pray that, that we would that we would uh, all be in, uh, be submissive to your will today, Lord. If there be uh, someone here who has a decision to make for you, Lord, whether that be to accept you as Savior, whether that be to, uh, to uh, join the Lord's church, whether that be to, to, to be baptized, Lord, whether that be uh, something in their personal life, Lord, uh, whatever the case may be, Lord, I, I just pray that today would be the day that we would be submissive to your will. Lord, I pray that everybody who came in today leaves changed. Even if it is something that the world may see as, as insignificant, we know that when we follow your will, it's something big, Lord. I just pray that today would be uh, a, a day that we could look back and sometime down the road and say, that was a good day to be in God's house. Lord, I ask that you would just bless us, that you would be with me, that you would hide me behind the cross, Lord, and that uh, only that which you would have to be said would be said today. And I ask all these things in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We see all the things that we've talked about, about what God is. And, and you know, uh, we could go on and on and on. And we could, there's books upon books upon books upon books talking about what God is. But at the end of the day, do we really know who God is? Do we really, can we even fathom who God is? Well, I can tell you this. I know what the Bible says about it. But when I start thinking, you know, that's dangerous. Whenever I get to that. But I start thinking. And, and I, I, I just have to stop it because I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll make my head start hurting and I'll start sweating. And just thinking about God, I, I'll tell you something that, that this is quick. But I start thinking about eternity. And it makes my head hurt. Think of it. We are, our human brains are programmed that something has a beginning and something has an end. But my, little, my, my brain cannot compute eternity. Not only that, but because I know Jesus Christ, I'm eternally in the... I believe when you read the Bible, when you look at it, when you see what happens after... We leave this earth once we're in heaven. I believe you look at it and you can't come to any other conclusion that we are never to leave the presence of 
Jesus. Amen. Wow. Eternally in the presence of my Savior. That makes my head hurt, though, thinking about it. There's some things I just don't understand. Maybe I have an understanding I can tell you, but I don't truly understand it. And God is one of those things. I can tell you what the Bible says. I can tell you what I believe, and I believe what the Bible says. But at the end of the day, my brain can't fathom God. Can't fathom God. But three things that we're going to talk about this morning shortly. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, we're going to see that God is light. God is light. It says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Light and in him is no darkness at all. Uh, folks, I want to tell you something this morning. Uh, if you are in a completely, utterly dark room, anybody ever been there where you can't, you come off and you put your hand in front of your face and you can't see the hand, right? You know, uh, whenever I was in high school, uh, I, I used to be, I know none of y'all believe this, but I used to like getting the teachers off track, okay? Uh, because then we didn't have to do so much work. But uh, we, we, I had a teacher, and uh, I, won't, I won't say the name, but uh, we were talking and they said something along the lines of, you know, the only reason that things have color is because the light, you know, retracts off of them or it reflects or whatever, you know what I'm saying. And that in complete darkness, things have no color. And I said, no. <laughs> That don't make any sense. It's, it, you know, if, if this this little suit right here, it's blue. If it's in dark, it's still blue. It's just, you just can't see it. And they put me in, he, he said, all right, smart fella, and get in this pipe, put me in a closet, and he slid a book under the door and then put a towel where I can. I said, what color is that book? And I knew which book he threw under there. I said, it, it, it's green. And they got mad. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, uh, in complete darkness, it's hard to see anything. I mean, you can't see anything. I'll tell you folks, in this world, this world is a very dark place. It gets darker every day, too. Uh, and just in our, our community, you know, we, for so long, and I've heard it for so long my whole life, you know, we don't have the problems like, you know, bigger places or other places, and that's, that's just simply not true anymore. Everything is everywhere at any time and this world continues to get darker and darker but God is the light Amen. you want to be able to see God is the light you know we have a lot of things in this world that uh, can even dress up and play the part of uh, a Christian or play the part of a church or play the part of a preacher but if you don't have God you, you don't have a light to be able to shine light and see, we'll fall right into the traps. We'll fall right into the, into the traps of, of lies. I love the rest of this first chapter, so I'm going to read it. It continues on about God's light, but it has other things to say. Verse 6 it says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You want me to tell you what this means? This is, a, this is a gut punch verse right here. That's what I like to call it. A gut punch verse. What this word verse right here says, that if you say you have a relationship with God, but yet you live like the world, that you are a liar. Wow. And that's not the preacher saying this. So if, you got, if you're mad at what I just said, you're mad at God, not me, okay? But uh, I'll let you be mad at me. But that's what this verse is saying, and you can't interpret it any other way. It says you walk in darkness. If you say you know God, then, then you ought to live like you know God and not the other way around, not vice versa. You shouldn't say you know God. Say you have a fellowship with him and walk in darkness. And I tell you, that's just like a lot of people say, well, I fear God, and, and, and they don't live like they fear God at all. Verse 7 says, But if you walk in the light and he is in the light, we have fellowship with one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us all from sin. And if we, that, uh, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. Anybody want to say you're not a sinner? You know, I'm not even close. I ain't, I've sinned today. Just, I mean, today. I've seen it 
see us as a bad church. You know, we, we, we see it. We're just so, we, we, we can't even go a little small amount of time. But verse 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our, our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And I want to talk about verse 9 for just a minute. We just discussed that we're all sinners, right? No, nobody raised their hand and said they wasn't. I told you I was. I, I don't know. I, I, you know, Paul said he's the chief of sinners, right? Well, I believe I'm the chief of sinners. And I think the reason why Paul wrote that is because he thought he was too. You know, I don't know every thought you have, but I know every thought I have. And I think I'm worse than anybody else in here. I'm the worstest. But... Uh, you know, I'm saved, and I talked earlier about that, that uh, I'm going to heaven. And that's not me puffing my chest out saying I'm better than you know. That just means that what verse, what verse 9 has to say is what I have followed. We confess our sins. If we confess our sins, did you notice how, how it doesn't say if we confess our sins, we get baptized, we, we, we do works, we, we uh, you know, speak in tongues, whatever the case may be. It says if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Mm. Pretty cut and dry, isn't it? They don't make all salvation. You know what we were talking about earlier. Those things don't make no sense. I don't understand. I don't understand salvation. To me, salvation is the single most impossible thing that can ever be done. That someone like me, again, I know the things I've done. I know the thoughts I have. I know the sins I've committed. But there's a lot of sins I probably don't know I've committed. But there's a whole, I'm a sinner, boy, and I'm, I, I know how, how terrible and how uh, uh, depraved I am. Yet I get to be in the presence of the Holy Son of God one day for all of eternity. That's impossible. Impossible. But yet it's going to happen. I don't understand it. I don't. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't understand how Jesus loved me that much. But he does. God is the light for this dark world. You know, uh, uh, and you know, I got to throw this in there. Matthew chapter 5 tells us that we are to be the light of the world. How do you get that light? You got to have God in you. You got to have Jesus Christ in you. You know, a little light can go a long way in a dark place. You can go a long way in a dark place. I've given you the analogy before that if this room was completely dark, no sun, no moon, no stars, it, it, it is pitch black dark, and there is, it, I mean, it, it's scary dark. And someone were to strike a match in the corner, and you're over here, you could find your way over there and never bump into a pew just from that match light. You know that? We're all getting dark, folks. You say, well, I can't do anything spectacular. You're right. 100%. But with God, you are spectacular. With God, the things that we do are spectacular. Moses, we just talked about it with his staff. Without God, he's just a fellow. With God, he was something special. We've got to allow God to be the light in our life. Next, turn with me to the first John chapter 4. It may just be one page flip, maybe two. First John chapter 4. Next we see we have God is light. Next we have God is love. God is love. Verse 16 of chapter 4 of the book of 1 John. It says, We have known and believed the, the, uh, the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwell in God and God in him. Everybody wants to be loved. Uh, you say, I don't, you know, people, people puff, puff their chest out and love me or hate me. I don't care either way. That's a lie. You do care. You, 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 may, you, may, it, it, you may not lose sleep over whether someone loves you or whether someone hates you. But at the end of the day, if you could choose, you'd rather them love you. You'd rather them love you. We're humans. We have a desire to be loved. And I don't care how macho you are, want to say, well, I don't, you know, we want love. We, we desire love. You know, I, I love all you folks here today. You know, you say, well, you don't know me. Well, I love you, and I'm going to tell you why. Because of God. Amen. God is love. And it, it, the Bible teaches me that if I have the love of God in me, I don't have room 
to hate anybody. I don't have room for anything else other than God's love. Let me tell you the best way to show love to someone. Tell them about Jesus. Hey, there's nothing more important than telling somebody about Jesus Christ. Now we have uh, we have uh, missionaries in our work that, that go to places in the earth that I'm never going to go. You know, uh, that I'm never going to see those people. I'm never going to I'm never going to break bread with them or 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 talk to them face to face or even know their name. But I love them, and you say how? Because I want them to know Jesus Christ. We have these missionaries and. The church's job is to send, uh, to go themselves and to send. But as we talked about, uh, you know, Brother Chase Reynolds was a, a fellow that, that the church is supporting him. He was in Indonesia with the yet for people who, who, who they, they didn't even, you know, they were, uh, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? They had really no human contact, outside human contact. I'm never going to meet those people. But I love them and I want them to know Jesus Christ. You know, it's our job. You know, anybody in here probably going to Indonesia anytime soon? You know, probably not. But God's called a man to that place. And because we uh, love them and because we want them to know the gospel, we send out missionaries. It's part of the Great Commission to go. But you're not going to go. You're not going to do. You're not going to uh, work. You're not going to give money if you don't love don't love. You know, a lot of things, I believe, are done in vain because they're not done in love. Uh, we have a lot of uh, people who, uh, and, and myself included at times, uh, who we will do things just because that's what we're supposed to do, right? It's just it's what we're supposed to do. But, you know, where it's not done right unless we've got love in our hearts when we do it. Uh, but the important thing is, to us anyway, is that well, I got them fooled. I got Brother James fooled. You know, I got I got Brother Olin over here fooled. You know, he, he, they think I'm, I'm doing this because I'm uh, you know I, I love it because I'm but I'm really just doing it because I feel like I ought to. I have to. But guess who you will never have fooled? That's God. He knows. He's there in our thoughts. But God is love. And when we've experienced the love of God, there's nothing greater. You can't, I don't believe, I'll say this, I don't believe you can truly, truly love anyone. Anyone. Spouse, kids included. So you have loved and experienced the love of God. You say, well, how can you say I can't love my kid anymore? Listen, bear with me. When you have the love of God, you understand what it means to be a loving parent. To, to, you have the guidance throughout your the, 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 that growing up of the child. That You have the guidance from God in order to way to raise them and to bring them up and to love them and to nurture them and to care for them. Amen. Those difficult decisions when you don't know what to do, guess what you do? You ask the Lord. Uh, you can't experience and can't give truthful love until you've experienced the love of God. In verse 17 it says, Herein our, is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world. Have boldness in the day of judgment? Wow. That's impressive, isn't it? That's impressive. We can't get into that or we'll be here all day. But take a look at that. James chapter 2 verse 13. Look at that. Not today, I'm saying. Write it down if you want to. I've heard a few pages. Let's focus right here. It says in verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Anybody here deserve the love of God? <laughs> not one single bit. Not one single bit. But he loved us anyway. He loved us anyway. Verse 20 says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Uh-oh, there we go again, getting called liars if we do certain things. 
For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Whoa, that's pretty strong language, isn't it? How? You know what? Uh, there's some people we just I don't I just don't jive with. Okay, uh, you know I just don't get along with. It's the truth. We, we, it's funny. We all have different personalities, and some of them just don't get along, right? You know. Uh, but uh, we should still love them. We should still care for them. We should still be there for them if they need it. You know what somebody said to me one time it made me look at something completely different. So if just one person hears this and it makes them look differently, then, then that's, all right. that's all right. But we're to look at people, even those people we don't like. Even those people who, you know, most folks don't like, right? You know, and if you don't know who I'm talking about, it may be you. But uh, <laughs> I'm just joking with you. I think everybody, I like you, maybe. But anyway, uh, you look at that person and here's what you, here's what you ought to think. God loves them as much as he loves me. Amen. God loves them. That person that I don't even like, God loves them as much as he loves me. God, Jesus Christ died on the cross for them just as much as he did for me. You know, people who persecute Christians, because that happens in the world today, guess what? Guess what? You ain't going to believe it. Jesus Christ died for them. Just as much as he did for me. We don't have that same love. The love of God. God is love. Can't know God without knowing love. Next. So we have God is light. God is love. Third and last. In the same chapter there in verse 12. Verse 12. We have that God is in us. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. But there's a catch. There's a catch, isn't there always? But wait, there's more. Uh, only when you have the love of Jesus in you. Only then can you experience the perfect love. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. In verse 13, hereby know we that we dwell in him. So he dwells in us and we dwell in him. Think about that for a moment. The creator of all the universe. You dwell in him, he dwells in you. Think about that. Because he hath given us of his spirit. <coughs> Verse 14. And we have seen. And do testify. That the father sent his son to be the savior of the world. Whosoever. Catch on to that word please. Whosoever. Whosoever. Shall confess that Jesus is the son of God. God dwelleth in him. In God. Is there any buts in that? Is there any? Uh, is there any uh, maybes? Is there any? Oh uh, well, yeah. If this is done right, and if this is done right, and if that is done right, and then you pray a whole bunch and you hope. That says, I'll read it again. Verse fifteen. I'm gonna read it very slowly. And if anybody comes up with a different uh, conclusion. Please meet with me afterwards. It says, whosoever. I got that word. Definition of that word means anybody, right? Anybody disagree? Whosoever is pretty broad. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him and he in God. You know, I believe the thief on the cross. I believe he believed Jesus and who he was. You know how I know that? Because Jesus told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. He said, remember me. He confessed that that man right there can save me of my sins. Is there a specific word that you have to say? Is there a specific prayer that you have to pray? No. I tell people all the time, 
people have asked, and I tell them all the time, I think that if you believe with your, all of your heart and you're broken over your sin, and you, I believe that you can just say, Lord, save me. Amen. I think that's it. That's I think that's it. I don't think that you have to go into these, uh, you know, uh, 10 cent and 25 cent and 50 cent words. I think that, you, you know, it says the faith of a child. The faith of a child. You know, I have a child. And uh, I have two of them. Not just one. But two of them. And you know what? Whenever I tell Finley, now Judah, he's not quite old enough. But I can tell Finley anything and she'll believe me. Uh, I'm going to tell Brody, you finally made it into a sermon. But one time I told him, because he, he was losing his teeth, you know, you get your teeth. And I told him we was keeping him over the summer. And I told him that, uh, you know, that eventually you, you, you lose your kid ears and you get your adult ears, you know. <laughs> and, and he didn't want to believe me. But guess what he did? He went and asked Mom and Daddy, <laughs> you know. Uh, but they believe you. When God says something, we ought to believe it. Amen. Just like a child. Just like a child. Some people get too smart for God. They, they start analyzing things. I've already told you. I don't have all the answers. A lot of times, whenever you say, well, why did God, if you were to come up to me, I'm a preacher now. I'm supposed to have the answers if you come to me with a Bible question. If you come up to me and say, why did Jesus do, do what he did? Why did God send his son to die for us? And I'm going to say, well, because he loved us. He said, well, and if you say, well, why? I don't know. I have no idea. I probably tell you right now. That's what I'll tell you. I don't know. No idea. But I'm so thankful He does. Amen. I'm thankful God loves me. I'm thankful that I have the light in this world. This world's a dark place. I'm thankful that I've got the light of Christ leading me. I've got God dwelling in me. Wow. You can have God dwelling in you today. We read two verses there. That if you will confess He is faithful and just to forgive, and then if whosoever will confess in Christ, he dwells in you. Hey, it don't get any better than that, folks. God is the light of this dark world. God is love in a world full of hate. And God, God dwells in us to guide us through this world. Because one day, one day, we're going to be with him. This world's going to pass away. This world will be no more. This body right here will be no more. I don't know if that will be raptured up or if it will be in the ground. But one of the two will happen. And I'm going to be with Christ forevermore. Not because of anything I did, but because of the love of God. Let's all stand.